Samsung might have just released one of the best mid-range devices of the year but there are some issues that might make you reconsider wanting the device. Let's dive in. So as you might or might not know, Samsung recently released some of the A-series devices of the year with the Galaxy A34 and A54. Now, this video is relating to the Galaxy A54 since it's naturally going to take up most of the spotlight and though this device looks great and also has some decent specs, I really think that there are some major issues that might change your view of this device, which I'll get to later on in the video but let's start with the design. Now, don't get me wrong, this design actually looks great. I like the fact that it resembles the more powerful Galaxy S23 which in my opinion is actually one of the best looking devices of the year. Now, although the Galaxy A54 doesn't feel the same way to the touch as compared to the Galaxy S23 but that's very understandable because the S23 is a flagship or in other words the best of the best that Samsung can offer for the year but with that being said the Galaxy A54 doesn't feel cheap at all like it still feels like a well built device. Now the display is also good enough I mean it's a full HD plus 120Hz AMOLED display meaning that it has great colors, smooth animations and with a screen brightness level that can go all the way up to 1000 nits of brightness I I think this is actually a very good display that is very viewable outdoors with my only complaint being the chunky bezel at the bottom. Now still on display it has a hole punch the 2 megapixel selfie camera which as expected would take good photos. Now on the back we have a triple air camera set up with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and the useless 5 megapixel macro which I mean I've said this before, the lower resolution macro cameras are useless, like all these 5 megapixel macros, 2 megapixel macros are all useless, telephoto lenses are better but to save costs smartphone companies still use the macro cameras for advertisements. Now considering the fact that there might not be a Galaxy A74 from the rumors I'm hearing this year, I at least expected Samsung to add a 3x optical lens but no, they did not. And the most absurd thing that Samsung did with this device is Samsung used an Exynos chipset on this device. You had one job. Just the one. Just one job and that was to give us a more powerful device because let's be honest here, except from the fact that the design looks different, the phone is really not different from the Galaxy A53 that came before it. Like I mean it has the same display, the same battery size at 5000mAh, the same charging speed, the same features, even the same IP67 water and dust resistance. So if you think about it very well, you'll find out that the only part of this device that Samsung should have improved massively was the performance. And yes, I know that there is a new camera system but the new 50 megapixel main camera is a downgrade from the A53's 64 megapixel main camera and although yes, I agree that higher megapixels doesn't mean better photos but the difference between the photos from the Galaxy A54 and A53 would be barely differentiated like to be very honest and I know some of you might say that yes, it's a new processor and all that, I should just give it a chance but it's an Exynos processor. There's a reason why Samsung didn't add Exynos chipsets on their flagships this year, that's with the S23 series and that's simply because Exynos chipsets are bad, like they've been bad since the Galaxy S9 Plus in 2018 and they've just been worse ever since then. Also they tested this new chipset by running some benchmarks and some games on it and Nano Review ranked this chipset at number 39. Let that sink in for one second. There are 38 more powerful chipsets that are out there and they are all better than the Exynos 3080. Like there are better mid-range chipsets like the slightly more powerful Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 or 778G Plus or the MediaTek Dimensity chipsets. Yeah, those chipsets are really really powerful to be very honest. Or the latest mid-range chipset by Snapdragon, Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 which is the 8th most powerful chipset in the world right now and all these options they were all there but Samsung still did what they did and the bad part about Exynos chipsets is the fact that they overheat a lot and they tend to lose their processing power over time due to thermal throttling and then another part of the device that is actually weird is the fact that the device costs $450 for the base model which has 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage but at that price point it's competing with phones like the Google Pixel 6a which firstly both devices are linked down in the description which the 6a is actually a way better device overall if you want to be honest so well that's just my own opinion that's what i think tell me what you think about everything i've said in this video down in the comment section my name is max and remember every single thing i listed here they're all linked in the description thanks for watching i'll catch you next time